Hey folks, Nathan here. So I'm sure you've seen this video floating around on the internet and clearly it's fake, right? Let's see. So you must maintain. Toss it on and... Oh. Oh no. Okay, I can fix this. And three, two, one. Easy peasy with VFX. But it doesn't just stop there. You can fix dust on the lens or sensor and even remove unwanted objects in your frame. So open up Resolve, download the sample footage down in the description. And by the end of this video, you'll be removing objects like a pro. So first shot was captured on a Panasonic GH5 and it's from the music video Misery by Problematic, link down in the description. And as you can see here, we have a little bit of dust on the lens or sensor. I'm not entirely sure, but it's quite unsightly. So how are we gonna get rid of that? Well, we wanna add a new node with Alt S. We then wanna go into our power windows because we want to draw something around it. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna use the circular power window and we can just take that over here. Now you would think we would put it over top of the area we wanna remove, but we actually wanna to toss it off to the side a bit. And let's check through the motion of our shot. It doesn't move a ton, so we have a lot of clearance here. So let's just make this kind of small and take in that softening a little bit. Okay, perfect. Now that that's beside the fleck of dust, we're actually gonna go into our highlight mode and then we're gonna come in here to our sizing controls. So right now I'm on node sizing and that's exactly where you wanna be. So click in node sizing and that adjusts the sizing of the node. Now we wanna pan this so that it's over top of our fleck of dust. So we're just moving it over. And now if we come out of highlight, boom, it's pretty much gone. We haven't fully covered it. So we can just go over a scooch more, bam instantly gone. So we can hit control D to disable it and re-enable it. And because at no point in the shot, any objects actually cross in front of this speck of dust, our job is done and it's just that easy. So now you're probably wondering how I did the eyebrow removal shot. Well, this is just a little bit more complicated than the last one, but still not too terrible. So what we wanna do is we wanna find our spot in our timeline right where we can see the eyebrow when the tape comes off. Because, spoiler alert, I didn't actually rip my eyebrow off. So, right there. So let's go back a few frames. I'm just using my keyboard to go over frame by frame. And now we can see the eyebrow and we're gonna make a cut there. We're then gonna zoom out and come over to the end here where we cover the eyebrow. So, it looks like I just so happened to land on the last frame where we can see the eyebrow completely. So we're gonna, again, add another cut. And now this clip is where we need to kind of replace that eyebrow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click on the clip. I'm then gonna create a new compound clip and you can name that whatever you want and hit create. We're then gonna come into the color page. And there are some easier methods in the studio version of Resolve, but this whole video is just about methods in the free version. So we're gonna come over to around the beginning of our video. We're then going to go into our power window. And this time we're gonna actually grab our pen tool. We're then gonna zoom in on our shot here. And we're just going to draw a shape around this eyebrow. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think you're best off to just go a little bit wide around it. And one of the things you really have to think about when shooting this shot is you wanna limit the amount of shadows that are actually on your face. So you wanna go with something that's relatively flat. This isn't a great example of that, so we've made it a little bit harder on ourselves. Anyway, we're then gonna come into the tracker and then we're gonna track forward to the beginning of the shot. So, perfect, that looks great. We're then gonna come back over and track all the way to the end of the shot and just make sure to keep your eye on it so it doesn't do anything funky and perfect. So that's just before the tape goes on. So we have the eyebrow tracked throughout the entirety of the shot. Also notice how I avoided the eyelids. If you do any blinking and you actually have the eyelid selected, it's gonna go all funky with the tracking. So try to avoid the eyelids, especially if any blinking goes on. It's just gonna make your life a little bit easier. So now, just like the last example, we're going to take our eyebrow selection and then move it up kind of to the center of the head. We're then gonna come again into our sizing controls, make sure to be in node sizing, 
And then we're just going to bring this sucker down. So we can just tilt it down. And you see that forehead skin moving over. Now right now you're probably thinking, hey, this totally looks like crap. I agree. So what we're going to do is we're just going to soften out this edge a little bit. We're going to come into our softness, increase that, and boom, just when you thought I couldn't get any uglier, well, here we go. A face only a mother can love, and it's literally just that easy. And I just want to finish by going over a couple tips because this video makes it seem easy, but that's only because we're dealing with like ideal circumstances. So just like in this first shot here, when nothing is going over top of the dirt spot. But if we actually go back to the beginning of this clip and we play it ahead, you can see his hat then goes over top of that dirt spot and then it goes away. So if we're to do that same solution as before, we're just gonna go into our color page, gonna go into our clips and then just copy the grade that we had used before. Okay, so now we have that fix and you can see that it's not doing a great job because it's literally just grabbing this piece and putting it over top. And when you have something going in front of that area, it ends up causing a lot of problems. And as you can imagine, as you get more complex like this, you're gonna have to solve the problem by going into fusion or something like that. But even this scenario isn't the worst possible case because you're only really dealing with one object going over top of the area. If you're dealing with something like an interior shot where the camera's moving all over the place, Oh man, you're in for a rough time. So be sure to try to catch these things before they become problems that you need to solve. But sometimes that's easier said than done. And if you want to see me cover a more advanced method going into fusion, dealing with these sorts of things, then let me know down in the comments.